This morning, we will bring to the church two words. The first one will be about ministry. This month, the whole work abroad is being praying for the pastors, for the ministries, for the families. We're going to give an interval and I have a second message. Pastor will bring. So for that, I invite the church to stand. The text will be projected. Second Corinthians. Our subject is what is the ministry in this work? What is the ministry in this world? In this work of the Holy Spirit? The next. The, f the text that will be meditating. Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked. A night and day I have been in the deep in journey, often in perils of waters, perils of robbers, perils of my own countrymen, perils of the Gentiles, city, wilderness, sea, among false brethren. The church this month has been praying for the ministries. But what is the understanding? What do you think? What do you understand what ministry is? Let's see. What is ministry? Is it a title? Pastor John, for example. Ministry is not a title. Position. What do you think? Is it a position? Keep going. Is it algo? Is it something to be enhance yourself? It's necessary that Jesus grow and we as a pastor diminish. I'm not worthy to kneel down and untie his sandals. So the ministry is not something to flesh yourself. Is a ministry something to be reached out? Yes. Bible says whoever aspire something like that, excellent thing to aspire. And I want to give you a heads up. The ministry in this work of the Holy Spirit is noble. It's a nobleness. It's a gift from God. It's a blessing from the Lord. <coughs> Let's talk a little more about that. <coughs> ministry is what? We're going to use uh, a lot of references about Paul. And everything I say here will be in the Bible. So the ministry for us, it's a blessing from God for man, from God from to man. Secondly, it's noble. It's something royal. To be a pastor today, it's noble. <coughs> There is a difference in between to be permanently a pastor or to be in the position under God's blessing. It's an excellent thing to, to desire. And it's also to be an instrument. 
they need to be in the position. Here I am as a prophet, send myself, use me. I am your servant. That's why one day he is in a place, another day he is in another place. He is in, in one position, later on he is in a different position because he is an instrument. What is ministry? It's suffering. So how, how, how is this possible? The first president of Presbytery, Pastor Dodge, when a pastor in a city was called, called him and told him, my son, ministry is a suffering. And sometimes people had trouble understanding that. When you are a ship, and when you tell your problem, your need to the pastor, so the suffering of the ship starts to be the suffering of the pastor because he was called for that experience. To cry with you, to cry at the feet of the Lord so you can be blessed, and then you're going to receive a, a greater blessing, which is to rejoice after you receive the victory. I had a, an experience recently and she asked for a door, professional door and later on she told me that she got the blessing. Now we are rejoicing. The ministry is suffering and we're going to see this in the life of Paul. It's to be tested. How a pastor can talk about trials, faith, to wait on the Lord, to talk about victory if he was not tested. And we can say, God will not give a ministry to any man that was not tested. Amen. Need to be tested and approved. Not by the church, but by the Lord. Now I want to talk about Paul's ministry. And later on you can get the tests, texts and check everything. How was Paul's ministry? Three times he was bitten with a rod. Once stoned. Three other times he was in cast. I was in a shipwreck a night of day and have been in the deep. That night, he said he was all night crying and praying, and at the morning, after suffering, in the morning, he said, Lord, now I ask you to speak with me. The day has rose. So he opened the word and the Lord told him, the cry can last all night long, but the, the happiness comes in the morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Paul experienced this the whole night in trouble, but in the next day he received the victory. In the journeys, many, many times. And the ministry now experience that our local pastor here is always traveling. That's why when you hear there will be a seminar over here, over there, 
So the church needs to pray for him. So the ministry in journey. During 15 years, I was in many, many journeys. Six and a half years, especially. I was taking care of a place in Bahia, 450 kilometers from my house. And we go, we used to go and come back six and a half years. I'm giving you the testimony. We never had a flat tire, nor an accident, a small accident. You know why? Because the church was praying many, many journeys, but the Lord never left us alone. There was a body, a church, and the pastor lived through the prayers for the body, from the body, from the church. Joyful is the pastor that has a church that prays for him. In danger, in troubled waters. Was it easy? No, but it was glorious. It was marvelous. In danger with the criminals. How many times Paul lived that? Danger in the city, in the wilderness, or uh, at the sea, overseas. Trouble within false brethren. In work and tiredness. I'm going to go fast so you can read later. In vigils, many times in hungry or thirst hunger or thirst so Paul lives under this in his ministry he went to hunger or thirst many many times fasting this is a characteristic of the pastor to pray for the for the flock and to fast for the flock I have th 30 years in the ministry. I was 23 years old. I'm 53 years old. I have experienced many, many times moments that I fast with the, the, the ship, with a person in the church. I remember a lady that asked me for pray for her marriage. And I could say to her, go to the Lord and ask Him if He wants a fasting, 24 hours fasting. It's easy to say that. But I said to her, let's consult and I'll do it with you. It's different. And we consulted to the Lord. And by the, mid the middle of the fasting, she called me and said, the Lord has given me the victory. The ministry of Paul, many times fasting. The pastor in this work of the Holy Spirit can be sure of something. He can consecrate for the, for the flock, for the sheep for the, the ship before the, the hours, they are from the Lord. And He knows that we have to be responsible for them before the Lord. In coldness, nakedness, and to take care of all the churches. The care of all the churches. Now I would like to make some considerations. The pastor, he needs to you interrupt me if you need. You need to learn how to listen. It's a characteristic that all the pastors need to have. So I'll tell you my experience. I was a pastor in a church for four years. Every day there was a man he want to talk to me. And the deacons, Pastor, he is waiting for you. Praise the Lord. So when I approach, I say, Pastor, what I need to speak with you is that I am apart from my wife and I would like to come back to her. So come, go back to her. 
And he and he say, but I don't know if it will be okay. And I say, so doesn't go back. Do you love her? So go back. So every day he has different excuses and different arguments. So for four years, every day. So one day, I was going around his neighborhood during the day. So someone stopped me. And he asked me, are you Pastor Everaldo? Yes, I'd like to thank you for the patience that you have with my brother to listen to him. Pastor need to learn how to listen, to sit, to listen, and listen, and listen. Pastor needs to be neutral. He cannot have a partisan is within the church. What is the what is the the side of the past? It's the side of the fellowship, the faith, the love. To to desire for the word the, the, the will of the Lord to be established. The pastor cannot take sides. And he needs to be humble. The Lord gave a great blessing during the church during the service but the, the honor and the glory can be given only to the Lord and I'll tell you something 30 years whoever tried to bring glory to himself will not remain and if you think there was a few no there was many that fell from that honor and glory just to Jesus all glory talk about Paul's professional life. So as, he, as he, he spoke about that, pastor in this work of the Holy Spirit, he cannot be uh, a heavy weight for anybody. I have my work. What the pastor needs? Your car, your money? No. The only thing that the pastors need is that you pray for him. Paul was a man that works with uh, tents recognize when he failed. What do you think, Pastor Ronildo? Brethren, this is the, the characters of a noble ministry. To recognize when he made mistakes. To be able to come and to ask, forgive me, I'm sorry. I gave you the word and the word is not appropriate. What is the problem? What is the trouble? None. For the pastor, there is a pastor. He's what? It's kind. Thirty years ago, when someone said to me, "I'm, I have, I'm afraid of pastor," and I say, "No, this is not possible." A pastor cannot be someone that put fear on anybody. A kind. It's a gentleman. Someone that never hold a grudge. Within the thirty years, some moments I heard things that I didn't want to hear from someone. Something that make wounds in my heart and open these wounds. And in my position as a pastor, I could hold the garage and say, that lady, that brother, that man, he'll see, I'll take care. But pastor, in this world, the work of the Holy Spirit cannot be like that. Uh, vindic vindicated Indicative. You cannot hold bad feelings because the ministry that comes from the Lord is 
full of love. Pastor needs to assist the, the, the ship. This is in the statute of the, sh the, of the, the ship. The, the sister, the brother, have right to be assisted by the pastor. He needs to learn how to cry with the ship. It's our role. The Lord took one of the ladies in my church. 3 a.m. the phone called and the message was that she departed for the Lord. We cried at the last moments of her life. So pastor has to, to cry as more as possible to keep the secret of the, the ship. The first first church, I have secrets from ship, from people from the church that are still with me. Pastor Ronnie, local pastor here, he keeps the secret from the, the, uh, the person from the church, the member. And this is one thing that is to be admired that capability. So a pastor will not be admired, beloved for words or for conversation, but for his work, the way that he deals with the sheep and the flock, the things of the Lord, for his example, not to be heavy to anybody. The pastor for the local church has his work. I have mine. And blessed be the name of the Lord for that. The pastor doesn't need anybody to sustain him. Professionally or materially. First thing to remember. The ministry in this work of the Holy Spirit is not professional. It's not uh, compensated materially. Pastor is here for love. I am here for love. I work four days, <coughs> two days and two nights. And I am a pastor of a church. Blessed be the name of the Lord that in this work, the pastor doesn't get salary. And the second thing, very important, the, doesn't exist a perfect ministry. Pastor Ronildo is the best pastor. Pastor Everaldo, it's the same. There's no better than the other. The only perfect ministry was from the ministry of Jesus. So here's this brief message. I will say as a, as a ship, he's your pastor. Love him, for he loves you. Sometimes you don't know how many times during the early dawn he might wake up, pray for you, leave his family to assist the church. What does he want from you? That you pray for him. That you pray for him. Pastor in this work of the Holy Spirit is a blessing. And to finalize, one of the things that touch my heart is when I go to early dawn, I stay quietly in my corner and someone stands and pray for the pastor. There's, this is priceless. It's marvelous. It's extraordinary. Amen? Let's stand up. Let's pray so we can have a little interval. Lord, receive this first part of this study. Stay with us for the rest of the works of this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Five minutes. So we can lift up, stand up, go to the bathroom, take, drink some water. So we're going to give a, a signal. <laughs> the keyboard will give you the signal.